Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel, and in the video today, we're looking at why American school buses are yellow and why they don't have seatbelts. An estimated 26 million students in the United States alone are transported to school every school day via bus, over half the student population in the country. While school buses in countries outside of North America usually look like any other bus, North American school buses are distinctive for their yellow color. It wasn't always that way. The first school buses were horse-drawn carriages known as school hacks or kid hacks. They were being made by Wayne Works starting around 1886 although it's possible they were around earlier. However, you probably wouldn't see teams of school hacks in every American town. Many children had to rely on walking uphill both ways through a snowstorm, farm wagons, or sledges to get to school. In 1914, with the popularity of automobiles rising, Wayne Works moved on to automobile chassis, allowing eager students to get to school faster. With these buses, students would sit down on the perimeter of the bus, facing inward rather than toward the front. Afterwards, the Bluebird Company began constructing a design for a bus that more closely resembles the buses that we know today, though they still had a long way to go. In the 1930s, school buses underwent a series of standardizations. Before this time, school buses were mostly vehicles that had been repurposed as a mode of transportation for a number of students to and from school. A California top design, the rounded roof of the bus, patterned by Gillick Brothers, was widely used, but parents were still worried about school bus safety and there was an interest in standardizing the way that children got to and from school. In 1939, Dr. Frank Sear rose to the occasion and organized a conference at the University of Manhattan in order to develop school bus standards. Prior to this, he had traveled the country, observing the various types of school buses in use and safety precautions that they used, if any. The conference was funded by a $5,000 grant, about $81,571 today, from the Rockefeller Foundation, and attracted transportation officials from all 48 states in the Union at the time. The result of the conference was 44 national standards for school buses being developed. One of these standards was school buses should be National School Bus Glossy Yellow. Initially called National School Bus Chrome, the color was chosen because of its attention-grabbing qualities. It gets noticed faster than any other color. For instance, in one's peripheral vision, studies have shown that humans notice the color yellow 1.24 times faster than another eye-catching color, red. Yellow is also particularly visible in the early morning and evening lights when school buses usually operate. The hope was that people would see the color of the bus quickly and know to slow down and be mindful of the children on board being dropped off or picked up. 35 states within the US switched to painting their buses this color soon after the conference, as did certain regions of Canada. But it wasn't until 1974 that all school buses in the United States were painted this color. While the standards are tweaked from time to time, the color of the buses isn't likely to be one of those things changed anytime soon, according to Bob Riley, the executive director of the National Association of State Directors of Pupil Transportation Services. <sighs> That's a mouthful. You can't buy a bus that doesn't meet that color formula. If they had to do it today, who knows if it would be the same, because now they have brighter, more noticeable things. Think of the vests highway workers wear. Obviously, they're even more noticeable than national school bus chrome yellow. But the rationale for maintaining that color is its universal acceptance. We've all been born and raised knowing what that is. With all this talk about safety on school buses, you might be wondering why there aren't any seatbelts on most of them. School buses weighing less than 10,000 pounds are required to have them, but they are usually the only ones, aside from the fact that the driver's seat always has a seatbelt. In a nutshell, the reason school buses don't have seatbelts is cost. The fact that school buses are already amazingly safe, and research to date has shown that adding seatbelts doesn't actually make school buses definitively safer, and in some scenarios actually increases risk of injury to the child. For alternate safety measures, the intentionally closely spaced seats, the bane of the knees of tall students, are extremely shock absorbent and able to protect children effectively enough, according to studies 
studies by the National Transportation Safety Board and National Academy of Sciences. Essentially, the seat design and spacing more or less functions as a protective envelope around the child. School buses are also some of the largest vehicles on the road, and they aren't typically driven very fast, further helping to make them safe without seat belts. Of course, the seats won't do much if the bus tips over on its side, but it would cost an estimated $800 million to outfit every school bus in the US with seat belts, and the problem is actually a little worse than just the installation cost. Because school buses are built to accommodate five-year-olds on up to the late teens, a seat that would have otherwise been able to safely fit, say, three seven-year-olds would only be able to have two seat belts to make sure the seat belts work on a hefty 18-year-old too. This would mean increasing the bus fleet size in the United States by an estimated 15%, along with all the continuing costs associated with that. If cost were the only factor, it still might get pushed through as think of the children is every politician's favorite expression for getting expensive things done, whether the thing proposed is a good idea or not. In this case, they could even trim off most of the upfront cost by simply requiring that all new school buses have seatbelts, then over the decades, seatbeltless buses would naturally be phased out. The new buses would cost a titch more due to adding seatbelts, and you'd still have the extra costs from needing more buses, but close to $800 million in savings is nothing to sniff at. The crux is that it isn't clear at all whether all this cost and effort would accomplish anything in the vast majority of crashes. In a number of studies performed looking at just this issue by various transportation agencies, there is compelling evidence that the number of deaths wouldn't change in any statistically significant way and the number of injuries may actually increase. For instance, it's thought that a short jolt forward into a heavily padded wall will in most cases result in fewer injuries than a strong jerk at the waist and the head smacking against said wall at an unfavorable angle, not to mention potential issues with longer evacuation times, particularly with primary-aged kids, in the event of a fire, among other such scenarios. From a practical standpoint, there is also the difficulty of a bus driver making sure all the kids are wearing their seatbelts in the first place and that they keep them on. The bus driver would also need to verify that the kids are wearing the seatbelts correctly at all times. Incorrectly worn seatbelts pose a definite injury risk in an accident. Beyond this slowing down transportation times, it's generally considered better that the bus driver is spending the majority of their time paying attention to the road instead. In the end, as the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration noted with their research on the seatbelt issue going all the way back to 1987, all evidence points to the fact that there is little if any benefit to adding seatbelts to large school buses. The National Association for People Transportation, the National School Transportation Association, and the National Association of State Directors and Public Transportation Services all concur with this assessment based on their own research. Instead, they all prefer to create egg carton safety envelopes that require the child to do nothing but stay in their seating area to keep them safe. It seems to be working. Despite being the number one way kids in the United States are transported to and from school, only about six students die per year in bus crashes in the US out of a total of about 26 million children transported throughout the school year. For comparison, a little under 1,000 kids die every year in the United States while walking, biking, or being driven to school in a car. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please give us a like below. It really helps out. And don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos most days of the week. Big subscribe button below me now. Also, over there on the right, a couple of other videos you'll probably enjoy if you enjoy this one. And if you're on a mobile device, you can't click on anything on the screen. So there will be links in the description below. And thanks for watching.